Good morning, everybody, and a happy Friday. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Um, today, I was been thinking all week about population growth. Uh, I got to thinking about Kent Hoven and how he says those eight people can uh, populate the world. the way he says it can. And so uh, I began to look at the mathematics behind that. Um, you can say all you want uh, from just a opinion point of view, but you need to have some statistics behind that. So I want to do some estimating for population growth. Uh, first of all, the size of population, population growth are vital statistics to a world that has finite resources. Uh, historically, human population planning has been implemented with the goal of increasing the rate of human population growth. Uh, humans uh, are... Uh, asset to a, co a country. However, since the period from the 50s to the 80s, there have been efforts to reduce human population growth rates. Uh, this all is, you know, people became alarmed at how fast the uh, growth rate was going. And you can look up on the internet uh, growth rates for any country or uh, region or whatever um, and that's what I did uh, the current growth rate in the US and in UK both is about 0.75 percent I want you to remember that number because it'll come in handy later Estimating population is very widespread and complicated science. It's used in controlling mosquito populations to curtail diseases, uh, domestic animal science, uh, resource use, future profits. I mean, it's just used everywhere. Uh, and even um, for uh, controlled growth of uh, animals, uh, here in uh, where I live, uh, they worry about um, deer populations gr growing unchecked and uh, wolf populations and so forth. Uh, and so it's also to maintain endangered species. Uh, they, you know, you can talk about the whales or. Um, polar bears or whatever. Uh, this estimation is heavily involved in statistics. And we're going to do some of that today, but I promise I'll try to keep it uh, quick. It, uh, this is using regression. A regression is when you try to fit a known uh, function to data that you've collected. Uh, when resources are limited, a lot of logistic regression is used. The reason for that is that the, at the right end, when you get toward the end of the regression, uh, it sort of levels off. Uh, the curve looks like an S. Uh, a linear regression can be used at times. Uh, all of us that have had any math remember the good old y equals mx plus b, uh, where you have slope and intercept. Come on, guys, you must remember this. For world human population growth, uh, we can also use an exponential regression. Uh, 
which is, which is not S-shaped at the end, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, this is a typical uh, growth, population growth. Uh, over on the left, it starts close to zero or close to some baseline. Uh, as the population grows, it starts out real slow. Obviously, if you start with eight people, uh, you know, it takes time to build up a population. Once you have, you know, 200 million, then uh, the population grows faster. So this is what, uh, this is what it would look like. Uh, so first of all, let's look at population growth after um, Noah's flood, which Kent Hovind says is in 2000 BC. Uh, you hear him all the time saying 4,000 years ago, and that's a long time. Uh, however, I don't think he thinks about the fact that 2,000 of those years have already gone by since uh, uh, AD 0. Uh, so, uh, uh, written history goes back uh, at least to 2000 BC. Uh, so here I have a graph that I have truncated at 2000 BC. And I started with eight population, but then it has to grow to uh, what the uh, measured data shows at uh, the further years. Uh, I stopped at uh, zero AD uh, just for a stopping point. This is what the population growth looks like with uh, no flood. Uh, here I started at 10,000 BC Again, just for a starting point, uh, you can see that it has the baseline and then it begins to climb like a usual uh, population growth uh, map or graph. Okay, guys, here's the math. Don't get scared yet. Uh, an exponential growth curve uh, is that uh, top part there. Uh, P equals P0 E to the RT. Uh, that X there means times. I don't know why they used an X, but they did. Uh, so P equals P0 E to the RT. And you can see uh, P0 is the starting population. Uh, e to the RT. R is the rate of growth and t is time in years uh, so the two variables that we're trying to estimate are p0 and t um, oh i'm sorry no i'm wrong p0 and r uh, so we get we get those variables um, the one on the bottom there is the linear uh, regression. Instead of y equals mx plus b, I use p equals R, rt plus p0. Uh, and you can see that the rate r is the slope and p0 is the uh, uh, intercept for the years. Uh, I used identical data from one source encompassing years 10,000 BC to 2000 AD, uh, which is close to our, our date. Of course, the flood data has to be truncated at 2000 BC because everybody was killed off. Uh, that year, I changed the population to eight because that 
those were who was on the ark uh, and Kent Hovind uses that a lot uh, so uh, that's my regression now I'm not going to show you all the math I I actually used uh, Microsoft Excel to do all the regression part that saves me from having to try to do the math for that and here is my regressions you can see the actual data over to the left top uh, and uh, I plotted the data those are the solid lines uh, from the previous graphs you can see the orange line there uh, that's the graph with no flood uh, the blue line is uh, the graph with uh, Noah, uh, Noah's flood um, and you notice there after <clears throat> uh, after about a thousand uh, BC uh, the two graphs overlap so you don't see the blue one but it's there okay the dotted lines are the regression that I ran uh, the orange one of course is a uh, uh, exponential regression gives you that line right there I was a little concerned because it it could have fit the data better uh, but this is what Excel gave me to work with uh, the Noah's flood data I used a linear regression because it was uh, it fit the day or it was better for the data uh, so there are the two equations that I got uh, the one up to the left is with no flood shows a hundred million as the initial population and uh, 0. 0.0004 as the rate of growth or rate of growth times time um, the uh, uh, bottom uh, to, to the right equation is uh, 83,416 uh, as the rate of growth and 200 million as the zero uh, where it crosses zero uh, I should have said that on the first equation it's not the starting point it's the point where uh, the graphs or the data crosses zero AD uh, okay so over on the left at the bottom there shown the data as I see it I pulled it off of the equations uh, so for no flood the growth rate is 0.04 percent that's an average growth rate over the whole time uh, you can see that you know where the data is sort of flat is going to be a very low growth rate and over near the uh, AD point uh, the, da uh, the data slopes more so it averages out at 0 AD it's a hundred million uh, people so then with the flood Noah's flood uh, the growth rate has to be 834.16% Per year starting at the year 2000 and at AD 0 uh, you have to have about 200 million uh, in order to meet the data uh, so what's curious you know or curious here is that each year uh, from the year 2000 on Kent Hovind's uh, 
population is going to have to grow by 83,416 every year. Uh, so uh, you have, you can imagine those eight people knowing his wife and those other people trying to give birth to 83,000 people in the first year. So the data over here, again, it's the same chart, shows the average growth rate with no flood is 0.04%. This compares well with the uh, 0.75 that we've got earlier, 0.75%. Uh, the average growth rate, including the flood, uh, is 834%. This indicates each year the population grows at 834 uh, percent. You know that's just an impossible growth rate. Uh, so we can clearly see that Noah's flood at 2000 BC, the average growth rate is just unattainable. This indicates that either the flood didn't happen, or it happened before 10,000 BC. Just to show you what it's like, I included here a graph of what the, what the world population looked like at the end of the second millennium BC. Uh, so that means, you know, about a thousand years after Kent Hovind says the flood happened. Uh, and you can see that there's uh, population everywhere in the world. So in a thousand years, not only does the population have to grow by 834%, uh, those people have to spread out over the world. Uh, and, you know, clear to the bottom of Chile, uh, Australia, uh, Russia, you know, all these places in the United States, uh, these populations have to spread out. And not only do they have to spread out, but somehow, you know, two Caucasians have got a, uh, or eight, eight Caucasians, excuse me, have to turn into uh, uh, Eastern Asian, peoples, India peoples, Australian Aborigines, uh, the South African or Sub-Saharan uh, Blacks, uh, and everybody else that is existing in the world. Uh, this all has to occur before, uh, uh, before 1,000 BC. So <clears throat> the world population is growing, it's still growing, uh, and I think you can clearly see that uh, having a catastrophe at 2000 BC is pretty much impossible. Uh, if you want to look up any of this data, it's all on uh, Google, you can search for it. Uh, if you need a link, uh, let me know and I'll uh, get it for you. Uh, so that's all I have for today and I hope you've learned something. Uh, and we'll see you again next week.